Yeah, I think just first of all, just uh, obviously very excited to get get started. I think uh, it seems like think football seasons come around faster and faster and faster, and maybe it's just because I'm getting older. But uh, but it is uh, the summer flew by. Our guys had a great summer workout, great off season, and um, you know we're we're anxious to get started. I know that there's a lot of you know, anticipation of, of hopefully a good season and, and all that. And you know the thing that we talked about and we talked about at the beginning of the camp is that. You know, it doesn't really matter what we've done in the past. Doesn't matter what we did last year, five years ago, ten years ago. You know, this is a different team, a new team, uh, with new new leaders. Uh, you know, the new incoming freshmen. Uh, all the things. It's, it's a new team, so the chemistry is always going to be different, whatever team you have. And so, um, but but so far, uh, the chemistry on this team is, is shaping up really nice. Um, the guys have really uh, had really good five days of practice, and uh, you know, it's still early in camp, so you really you're know, still trying to figure some things out. But but our but our guys playing with great attitude and great energy, and that's the two things that we obviously want to do. And um, you know, so again, we're just excited to get going. So um, open up with any questions. So with um, with Jalen being the number one running back going into the season, how do you feel um, with that role that he's putting on his shoulders? Do you think it'll give him any more confidence going into the season? Well, I, I would hope so. You know, after the kind of season he had last year, he, he's had a really, really good all season. I mean, he's gotten a little bit bigger. He's obviously strong. I mean, he's him, him and, and Terrence up so squat over 600 pounds this summer, I mean, which is phenomenal. And um, he's really gotten in good shape. And so I think, I think he's kind of taking it all in stride, you know, because he's had some, you know, what, what was he, Sun Belt Player of the Year last year. And um, he really, he really just, hasn't let it go to his head or any of that kind of stuff. I mean, he's worked just as hard, if not harder, than he has in the past. Um, and the great thing is he doesn't have to do it by himself. And I think, uh, you know, just like last year with our offense, you know, Marcus ended up having 1,000 yards. Shea had a, a really good season. You know, Taylor Lamb rushed for 500 plus whatever he threw for. So so we got some good weapons around him. It's not one of these deals where, hey, you know, you got to carry it 30 times a game and you're going to be the guy. Um, he, he's going to have, uh, obviously, his, his share of carries. But, man, there's some good players that are going to be surrounding him and, and other good running backs. So um, he didn't have to do it all on, on, just from what, just himself. I mean, he's going to have some more help. Scott, you mentioned leadership. Um, you, had a, you had a great group of leaders that graduated mm -hmm. out. And it was also a very vocal group of leaders. As you've seen the kind of the summer progress and these yeah. guys are kind of moving into those roles, how has the leadership style of this particular senior leader group developed and, and where do you want to see it go from here? Well, we, we have a lot of seniors. I think when I look back and counted, I think we have maybe 12 seniors that are penciled in the starters right now, offense and defense. And, and these guys have been around a, a long time. And most of these guys have been starting for two or three years. Um, and they, you know, they understand what it takes to win. They understand how to work in the off season and, and how, to, how to stay in the moment during the season. Um, so I, I think more than anything, by example, leading by example has been has been huge for these guys. Um, there are a couple of guys that that will speak up when they need to, but but I think more than anything, you have to be who you are. Uh, you know, if you're a vocal guy, then be that. You know, if you're not, you can't be a vocal guy. If you're not, nobody's going to really listen to you anyway. Uh, but I think these seniors have earned the respect from their teammates, from each other, and you know when they do speak up, you know everybody's listening, everybody's paying attention. Uh, but we have we have some really good leaders. You know what we do during camp, uh, we allow a senior to get up and speak. You know just what our team's in there, and, and they get to share whatever's on their heart. And so far, you know we've had five guys do that. It's been awesome to hear what's on their heart. Um, and these guys, uh, they'll they'll be really good leaders for us. And uh, but I think more than anything, because of the experience they've been through throughout the whole time they've been here. I guess Bill, Bill spoke yesterday or yeah. whatever day it was, two days ago. Maybe <clears throat> what was it like to kind of watch that to know the news that you're yeah. going to be able to share with him? Well, it, it all it all determined how well his speech was, whether he was going to get that scholarship or not. Um, and he did really well. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. He, he's uh, he's a guy that's been through a lot and uh, really um, he found his role. You know, he started out as a linebacker here after the first couple of years, and then moved over to uh, our H back type position and just kind of worked his way in there. And you know, he actually started a couple of games and um, plays on several special teams for us. And you know, he's the kind of guy. And I told the team that he. He is a perfect example of what we want our Appalachian State players to be, and that is guys that, that give their all and do everything they possibly can um, to help our football team, and, and he's done that. He's got a tremendous student. Uh, you know, he's a, close to a 3.5 GPA. So he's, he's done all the things that you want and, and ask into a teammate to be. And, you know, as, as a coach, it's awesome for me to be able to reward a guy like that with a scholarship. And, you know, because if you walk on, and I did, I mean, I know how they feel. As a walk on, you're trying to prove every day that I'm, I need to be here and I can be here and I can compete and play with you guys. 
Um, and really, more than anything, it validates all the hard work that you put into, and it's so exciting. And it, you guys saw the video. I mean, it, it was good raw emotion from our team. I mean, that, they really respect him, and that's that's what it's all about. And that's what one of the great things about sports in general is to be able to reward somebody for all their hard work. Um, you know, and then we talk about how that guy is going to be very successful in life because of, of his work ethic and how he approaches every day. One of the things with Taylor as a senior is he mentioned how with the receivers it's, it's to be easier every single year making those play calls and telling them where to go on the field. Can you talk about how that could possibly impact with the wide receiver group that you have this year? Yeah, I'm really excited about the receiver group this year. You know, we, we moved some guys around uh, a little bit. We, Isaiah's on the outside, um, Darrington at slot. Um, um, you know, you got uh, Jalen Virgil that redshirted last year, who I think is going to be phenomenal. You got tremendous speed and size. And the newcomers that we brought in, the four newcomers are, man, they're very, very talented. They'll be really, really good players for us here. Um, whether it's this year, I don't know. Well, that remains to be seen. But tremendous talent and good work ethic. Um, but but Taylor's been around here a long time, and he, you know he's really helped out those guys. I think over a period of time. But Dante Jones is a fifth-year senior. You know Shea's a four-year senior. So we you know we have some guys that's been around here, and, and so uh, but that group's going to be pretty good for us. Um, you know, be, to me that was one of our weak spots last year at wide receiver. But I think this year um, we really could um, could really do some good things at wide receiver room. What goes, into your, what goes into your decision to redshirt somebody? Well, we, as we look at it, a lot of it depends on what you have in that position. And we're going to look and see if what we have in that position, is that going to be good enough for us to compete for a championship? And if it's not, if the newcomer is going to be better than that person, then obviously we're going to play them. If, if we have some depth, that's going to help as well. But if we don't have depth and we're thin somewhere, that's when those guys have to be thrusted into a role, maybe a, as a backup. Um, and, then, and at that point, we're going to put them on a lot of special teams, and so we're going to play them. I, I don't want to. I don't want to have a guy become a member of the team and play when he's only getting four or five snaps a game. You know, I, I would rather let that guy develop and, and redshirt and get stronger and, and all the different facets of, of life uh, to go through that, and then come back for four more years. And I look right now. You know, Kenny Gilchrist and Park Collins. You know, they could be on our team right now had we redshirted them the first year. I think they would have been so much better players coming out. That fifth year, you're so much more ready. I think mentally is everything, you know, athletically. Um, so we try, you know, last year we tried to redshirt most of our guys and we'll try to do that again this year. Now we'll see, there may be some, but we won't make those decisions until we get, you know, right there, you know, around the first first part of the season. Going back to uh, what you said earlier about this new team, new, uh, what's, what's the personality of the team this year that you've noticed so far, even though it's early in camp, what, do you, what have you noticed that's yeah. different this year about this group of guys and well, I, you know, I don't know. It's hard to tell right now. You know, it's still so early to tell. I, I know this. They're they're fun to be around. We're, we don't have. We got a bunch of good guys. Um, they're, um, you know, the, the young guys that just got here. They're kind of just. They're big eyed right now. They're trying to check it all out. But the older guys have led in a great way. Um, they uh, they believe in what we're doing as a coaching staff, and so they've bought into what we're selling them. I think, um, you know, right now what what camp is all about is defining roles. And that's going to be defining our chemistry as well. So defining roles is, you know, if, if what, whatever my position is, what is my role going to be? Is it going to be a five-snap guy? Is it going to be a 30-snap guy? Or am I going to play the whole game? Or am I just going to run down on kickoff team? You know, so these kind of things. Or am I going to be a scout team guy? Those things have to get defined throughout the, the first month. And, and that's kind of where we are right now. So it's kind of hard to tell where the chemistry is going to be. I know this. I think we're a fast football team. Um, Really fast on defense. Uh, you know, really at all the positions, D line, all, all three positions, um, we're flying around to the football. It's impressive to see. It's hard. You know, I often think back in the camps of, of my time coaching. Whenever your defense, if your offense can't move the ball very much, then usually you end up having a pretty good season. And and right now, offensively, we hadn't moved the ball very good. And so now, as you know, a guy who's calling the offensive plays, that's not very much fun sometimes. But I look at the overall picture too and say, you know, if our defense is pretty good, we're going to have an opportunity to have a solid football team uh, because of how well they're playing. And hopefully, they'll continue to play that way. And but I think defining roles right now is the biggest uh, thing we have to do. Coach, you've had your hand in this program for a long time. Um, what do you uh, What do you expect from this this season with the schedule you have? I know you have not really paid attention to that at this point. Yeah. Um, but for the for the years that you've had influence on the team. Is this year the, the season that might be the most be able to go undefeated, or what other teams have, have been had that shot? Yeah, well, my senior year we were undefeated in the regular season in '95, and um, you know 
we didn't never look at it that way at that point in time. We've had some great seasons throughout the, you know, the 05, 6, and 7 teams were really, really good. I don't think you ever look at it that way for us, and I know everybody hates to hear it, but, I mean, you take it one day at a time, one game at a time. I mean, that's – but that is what you absolutely have to do in this business. If you start looking ahead or looking behind, you're going to get beat. You're not going to get any better. Um, all I try to do for our teams – is can we be competitive in our games that we're going to be playing? Because I think if you can be competitive, then you give yourself a chance to win the game. And so I, I think this team will, is good enough to be able to compete for our conference championship. Now, there's a lot of time between now and, and the end of the season and a lot of games. Um, we, have a, we have some good ingredients on this football team to be very, very competitive. And that's all we, that's all we try to be. And, you know, you can go back and look last year. I mean, the only game we were not, what was not competitive in was Miami game. And, and I thought they played extremely well that day. We didn't play as good. But, but we want to be competitive in every game to give ourselves a chance to win the football game. At the end of the game, we, at the end of the season, we hope what we've done is good enough to warrant a championship caliber football team. That's how we approach it. Looking back at your wide receivers, um, uh, well, I guess first, first question is, do you have any packages where Shaden – Metters and Jalen Virgil are on the field at the same time, and and uh, what what do you feel about that that, rep, that represents yeah. a challenge for the defense? Well, I think first of all, you know, the one thing that stands out is that we have some speed at wide receiver where we can we can knock the top off, and meaning we can get behind some of the secondary guys and take some shots down the field. We we were not as good at that last year. I mean, Shea had a couple, but. But I think uh, Virgil's going to be able to do that. Shea's obviously going to be able to do that. Isaiah Lewis on the outside is going to be able to do that. Um, you know, T.J. Watkins, he stays healthy, can do that. I mean, he, there, there, there's some fast guys that in the past were really utilized underneath throws that we're going to try to stretch the field a little bit more this season. We're obviously going to utilize those throws because we want to control the off, uh, control the game through offense, um, control passing, and run the football. But um, we want to take the top off with some deep throws this year, and we think we're going to be able to have some guys that can do that. Um, will we have packages where certain guys are on the field together? We will. Will we utilize them as much one game or another? It depends. It depends on what the games are. But, um, but we certainly have weapons out there. Now we've got to figure out ways to get them to football. Scott, right after spring ball ends, you and your position staff really kind of turn to recruiting, and you really leave the players in Mike Sirianno's yeah. control, and he's got five months to really mm -hmm. work with them before you get back into camp. What are the biggest things progression-wise that you saw from the work that went on this spring and summer? And how do you expect that to manifest itself on the field? Well, I think, I think they, what they do down in the weight room is, is a lot of physically uh, and maybe more mentally than anything. I think um, um, we, our older guys, are, are, their strength levels are really, really good. And, you know, at some, you get to a point where you got to back off a little bit. You, you don't need to get any stronger, just like our two running backs. They don't need to get any stronger. I mean, there's plenty strong. You know, Kobe, Gossett, Bun, some of those older guys, they don't need to get any stronger. Um, so we try to just maintain where we're at. The strength levels are great. Um, you know, what we're really working on there is the mental part of the game uh, with our young guys. I think that's the biggest thing that we work on and, and struggle with, and our young guys struggle with it at times because you, know, you start questioning, is this really worth it? All those kind of things that goes through your mind. But that's what we're talking about. That's why I like the seniors talk, because they all talk about the struggles they went through. You know, everybody wants to look at them now, you know, if an all-conference player or, you know, a great player, this or that. Well, they went through struggles as well. And I want those young guys to learn that when you're going through this stuff, man, on the other side, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so much fun. So, so I think that's what, more than anything, they do in the weight room and on the field. And, um, you know, we had a great offseason this year. And this is a long time. And I think our guys are so – you know, thankful to be able to finally get to the season and have to, you know, not mess with Coach Mike in the weight room right now, you know, um, so they can start playing some ball because that's why they're here, you know, to play some football and not, not lift weights or run track. I mean, they want, they're here to play football. We got time for one more. Um, earlier, Jalen Moore said that he doesn't think he hit his peak yet. And what ways do you think, uh, first off, do you agree with that? And then secondly, uh, what ways do you feel like he could become a better mm -hmm. player? Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I think all, all our guys, continue and strive to get better and better, and they, and they all can. Um, <clears throat> I think for him, there, there was times uh, where the, the vision is, and the, as a running back was not as good as he wanted it to be. And I think for him, just the feel of the game, and that was just really his last year, first time starting and playing a bunch of football. Um, and by the end of the season, started doing some really, really good things, I think. Um, but, but for him, I think vision, understanding where to hit the holes, when to hit the holes, that's one thing that Marcus had a great knack for um, of, of – of reading the lineman's blocks and then sticking his foot in the ground and then getting north and south there. And I think Jalen's got to get better at that, and I think he, I think he will. 
I think he, he increased his speed. And, and he was fast last year, but I think he increased his speed again this year and his power. Um, so that enables him to break tackles. If, if anything, it's going to be the vision and knowing where to hit the holes. I think that will obviously improve his game. Good. All right. Thank you, guys.